You need to have a great respect for money. You don't find money, you monetize a gift. What do you believe about money? Think of what you heard about money as a child. Look at what you absolutely love to do between the age of seven and 14. The universe that put you on the planet gave you a talent and the universe that gave it you will support you totally as you monetize it. Hey everybody, welcome to this video. Uh, we're gonna be doing a deep dive with Marissa on how to train your brain to make more money. It was the biggest impact that everyone loved in the channel in the last month. Where did your money is beautiful start? So my dad was two things. He, his father was a fireman, they didn't have money. So my father was very careful about spending money. He would always buy reduced things wouldn't pay for parking, very keen not to waste money, but also all his enjoyment in all that didn't come from money. His enjoyment came because he loved his job. So he taught me two interesting things. You must have a job that you love. But I also realized he had very limiting beliefs about money because his family had none. He was very frugal about that. Put the heating off, turn the lights off, don't waste money. And I realized even though when you live in that money mindset where your beliefs about money come from the previous generation, they're not yours. And you must be very careful not to make someone else's belief your own. And of course, I worked with lots of clients who were immensely wealthy and others who weren't. And the ones who were wealthy had a very interesting mindset. And they all had the same belief. I absolutely am worth this. I deserve it. And even better, the more money I have, the more good things I do. And I notice if you have that belief, the more I have, the more good I do, then there's no guilt about, oh gosh, I've got more than someone else. I should keep it quiet, hide it, pretend I don't have it. We often have this sense of shame about money. We use words like, that person's filthy rich. Look at that fat cat. Look at that rich bitch. And we use very derogatory language to explain someone has money. And then we say, oh, but you know, these people are good people. Spiritual people don't need money. So we almost have this belief that having no money is a very spiritual place to be. And having a lot of money means you've sold your soul to the devil. You have no scruples and you're just a mean, ruthless person. I have two questions that spun off of all of that. Number one, when you've met all these extremely wealthy people, what are the stages of getting to that point? Because I'm assuming maybe you could tell me a story about someone that you worked with that came in not as firm about their money beliefs. And then there's got to be steps to getting there. Yeah. I, I doubt anyone jumps from money is evil mm. to money yeah. is amazing and is so good for the world. There's got to be this gradient of. Yeah. What is that gradient? Well, the first step I is, is to think of money as energy. So if you think of all your expressions, I can't find the money, which by, which in itself is a very strange thing. Nobody says, I need to pay my bills. Then I'll go for a walk and I find the money. Then I'll come home and pay my bills. You don't find money. You monetize a gift. You earn money. You make money, but you don't find it. The first step is to identify these blocks. What do you believe about money? Where did these beliefs come from? Who told you that? Was it ever true? Even if it was true for them, is it true for you? Like here's a classic one I heard, growing up, men don't like women with money. If you've got money, you'll never find a husband. A man. Did you believe that growing up? Yes, I did initially. Well, I didn't have to. I didn't have any money growing up. I mean, I wasn't poor, but I didn't have enough money to, th that was never going to be a worry. And no. do you think that was a part of why? You were yes, sort I of definitely fearful? definitely think so, yeah. So then I began to realize I must make my own money beliefs. And so I began to make my own money beliefs. I'm, I'm worthy of this. I deserve this. I have a gift. I'm sharing it. I can give of my gift. I can give, but I can also receive. And so I began to do this little thing, and I can do it with the audience now, which is to take a breath in, breathe in. And now I want you to be a real giver. I want you to give all that breath away. Give it all away. And you know you can do this for four minutes to keep giving. Give more. Give all that breath away. Just keep being a proper giver. Don't take. Just give and give and give much more. We've got at least another three and a half minutes to go keep giving. And only when it starts to feel really horrible, do you go, okay, now take a breath. But now I want you to be a take, I want you to take all the air you can and keep it, don't share it, take it all in and hold it, keep that air, take everyone else's air because you need it more. And again, you can do this for four minutes, take, take, keep inhaling, don't exhale, take more, take more, take more. And when you really can't stand it, give. And now just give and receive. Give a breath away, take one back. It's complete balance. Nature requires balance. And when you can apply that to money, if I can give and receive breath, and it's the first thing I did when I came onto the planet, the first thing to do is take a breath, give one away. Then I can also give of my skill and receive a great salary. It's that perfect balance. I'm giving something amazing to the world and I can receive. 
Now, what about people who live in places, let, let's say they're like a janitor at a school or something yeah. like that. How do they work with this giving and receiving thing? Do they need to find an entirely new profession? Well, you need or? to do two things at the same time, as well as giving and receiving. You need to start identifying these money blocks and change the word to energy. So let's do that now. Think of what you heard about money as a child. I can't find the money. Money doesn't grow on trees. There is no money. Money slips through my fingers. Poor people don't have money. And now start to say, I can't find the energy. Energy doesn't grow on trees. I don't know where the energy is coming from. Only people who've gone to college have energy. I can never keep energy. And then you begin to think, well, that sounds a bit silly, doesn't it? So when you switch the word money for energy, it's easier to start to give up these limiting beliefs. You know, Tony Robbins, by the way, was a janitor. So it doesn't mean if you're a janitor, you can't go far. Rod Stewart was a grave digger. There are many people that started off doing very menial jobs. So then how does someone find the audience watching? How do they find whether they should continue on the career path that they're on or whether they should hop career paths or, or build something different. When you've gone through your money beliefs, you got to flip them. I can't find the money becomes, I have a skill. I was born with a skill and I can monetize it. Money slips through my fingers becomes, I'm very good at managing money because in order to keep wealth, you do have to learn to manage it. You might know that 70% of lottery winners are bankrupt in three years, no matter how much wealth they win. And that can be a huge amount of money. Why is that? Because they've never learned to manage it. So your relationship with money, if you don't have much, here's your relationship. The money comes in, you spend it all, you know, bills, all things you have to pay for, and then it's gone. So when those kind of people get wealth, they just spend it all. They've never done investing or growth, so they wouldn't even understand it. And so to get that 70% to keep their money and use it wisely, you have to teach them to invest. But here's something else about money. You need to have a great respect for money. So what's your recommendation on this then? Like, So what I'm hearing you say is that no matter how much money I make, it's about starting to treat the percentages of money as mm -hmm. if I were making a million dollars a yeah. year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so what's your recommendation on that? Like what, what's the technical side? Where do I start with that? Well, first of all, change your language. The way you feel about everything is down to do with how you talk. Your words shape your reality. If your reality doesn't please you, change your language. So you can say things like, I'm wealthy, I'm rich, I'm abundant, because that doesn't actually mean money. You can have a wealthy set of money. You can be rich in friends and rich in joy, and you can be enriched by things like your garden or your pets. You know, there's a great song when I was a kid about someone who just had a baby saying, shake hands with a millionaire because I've got this baby and I'm just the king of the world. Because often you can feel like that. You can be enriched by love and joy and things that money can't buy. So when you can switch your mindset to that. And the second thing to do, which is really important, is to look at what you absolutely love to do between the age of seven and 14. It can be between the age of six and 50, but the things that you loved then a keys to your unique skill set. Every person is born with a gift and a skill and a talent. And your job is to find out what is your unique gift and then monetize it. And don't be ashamed of monetizing it. Think of your gift. What is your gift? What is your unique skill set? Because it's hard to become wealthy doing something you hate. And you know, some of the things that have made people immensely wealthy now are shaping eyebrows. Who would have thought that? Mm. Doing a makeup tutorial. And something I've heard you something. talk about a lot in regards to this and the comments I've seen mm -hmm. from people is that, you know, maybe they enjoyed playing dress up or mm -hmm. they enjoyed dancing. And uh, something I've heard you say is that it doesn't necessarily have to be the exact action no. that you loved as a child, but you can start to see what are the skills or the habits underneath mm. those actions, yeah. right? So if it was if it was dancing, then there there might be something associated with like embodiment or yeah. movement of some mm -hmm. kind. Like you went and worked for Jane Fonda. That was like I your did, first yeah. like big thing. And if Jane happened. Fonda, of course, made all her money, she made more money from the exercise than she ever made as an actress. And she only did that to raise money for her husband, Tom who was a politician, so she was trying to raise money for him and realized that, gosh, there's a lot of money in workouts and workout gear. And the days of you gotta to go to university, have a degree, and then you can make wealth just don't exist. Rihanna has made more money from makeup 
more money from Fenty than she made from singing. And so many people now realize, ah, oh, that's where the money is, creating something, gaming, ah, IT. And so here's something really interesting that I haven't heard you say before, which is maybe the wealth that you build is not necessarily gonna be from the passion or the love mm -hmm. thing that you do, but is going to result from yeah. that. So like Rihanna, yeah. right, loves singing, yeah. but made her money. Money from Fenty. Angelina Jolie always wanted to be a humanitarian and needed a platform. And so she actually created, became an actress, not really because she wanted to act, she wanted to be a humanitarian, she needed that platform. And of course she's made a lot of money from her vineyard, Miraval. And so it's interesting that you don't even have to know where you're going. You think I'm going there, but often you go over there and around there and then you somehow end up there. I was going to be a teacher and I didn't become a teacher, but here I am actually teaching. So mm -hmm. in Weird Story, I went over there to become a teacher, actually became a therapist, became a writer, but now I teach therapy and I have my program in school. So it's almost gone full circle. But what's so lovely for me is that the program in schools is completely free. We pay for that. We pay for, to make it, we pay to film it, we pay to market it, we pay for the production. And I could never have given all these 1,600 schools these free programs if I hadn't been successful because a therapist shouldn't make money. It's a noble profession. You shouldn't charge money. But of course, there's the other side of that. People don't value something. They don't pay for it. It's like if you go to a car, so how much is that? A dollar is too much. And it's so weird that because something is so cheap, or is free, it has no value. I know that many years ago, a particular company was paying me to stop all their staff smoking. They were just about to make smoking in public in England banned, and so they sent me all their staff. And I've always had a massively high success rate of people smoking, and it, it, it wasn't very, it wasn't as high. I was like, oh, and then I was, of course, because the company pays for it. It's like, oh, well, this is a day out. Who cares if it doesn't work? I didn't invest anything in it. I want to stop smoking, but it's too hard. I haven't lost anything else. So I said, okay, we have to change this. You must make the staff pay and you can reimburse them a year later. And then the statistics went up because they were invested in it. So there's a huge <clears throat> nugget that you just dropped there for everybody. A huge part of success mm -hmm. in business is about choosing the right customers yeah. or putting the circumstances sure. right for the customers. Yeah, and, and valuing something. So somebody would say, you know, I, I drove an Uber for three months to buy this television. I drove an Uber for three months to get this computer. So they, they look after it. They don't spill coffee on it. They can't replace it. But when you get something very easily, you see that with your children, you have to value and respect stuff. And if you just get everything easily, that's what I call the self-destruction sort of talent. Many artists like Amy Winehouse, they get so much money for something that comes so easy that there's no real effort involved. Amy was such a talented singer, she could sit down and write about pain, she could knock out songs like that. But then there's no value because the feeling is I didn't earn it, same with a lottery, I didn't earn it. I got to get rid of it. And so this is what happens with some people when they get their money easily, they have an overwhelming urge to get rid of it because there's no sense of I'm worth it. So I realized that the big key to generating wealth, aside from obviously having a talent, is saying I'm worth it, I'm worth it, I deserve it. I deserve to be extremely well paid for this gift I have. And you really have to sit with that and do it over and over and over again. You said another gold nugget there that I, I really want to cement for okay. everybody, which is how do we know when we've we've really done it and we've mm -hmm. gotten there? like. I'm worth it. How because you can ask for it. See, if you say to some people, how much is it? They kind of go, oh, it, they kind of mumble as $200 or they say it really quickly or they kind of won't tell you the price or they they beat around the bush because they feel uncomfortable saying, I want this or this is how much it is or this is the investment. You know, an investment is a very different word to the price. Of course, we've all heard that expression, if you have to ask the price, you can't afford it. But we're very uncomfortable asking. We have parents who say, I want, never gets don't ask, don't be greedy, don't show me up. So we learn very early, I must not. Yeah, so then would you say that if someone's watching this, one of the the signs mm -hmm. that you're, you yeah. haven't really embraced mm -hmm. this yet is that if someone else is very forward about mm -hmm. money, you find that Offensive, jarring. Offensive, yeah, you don't like it, mm. yeah. Yeah, and there are people who do appear very greedy, so it's finding that balance of, I'm worth it, I'm worth it, I'm giving this, and what I'm giving, I deserve to be recompensated. But, you know, we buy the most crazy things, of everything we're buying, almost without exception, 
is because of how it makes us feel. I want Nike trainers, not ones from Target. I want an Apple phone, not a cheap one, because I feel, I feel cheap if I haven't got the nice one. So if you can understand that almost everything you want to buy is because of how it makes you feel. If you can create a product that makes people feel good, then you'll do fantastic. You know, people pay more for stuff that makes them feel good. Instead of buying a chocolate bar, they're buying a protein bar. Instead of buying a can of Coke, they're buying protein shakes. We're paying more for water in glass bottles. We, we pay more for things that make us feel good. And the second thing is that people buy something that alleviates the pain. Now, can someone build wealth as a... Uh like an employee or oh, is it absolutely yeah and yeah. how would they go about that well you know a lot of things that we're creating are not revolutionary they're evolutionary and some of the richest people in the world like james dyson he didn't invent a vacuum cleaner someone else knew that he just looked at him and thought i could make this better my wife's just vacuumed and as she takes the bag out there's dust everywhere sarah blakely put on a pair of white pants and didn't like the fact you could see her underwear so cut the feet off a pair of tights and Spanx was born. I mean control wear that's not new it's been around since the 40s but she did something that was different in that she took an existing product and made mm. it better and so it isn't about are you a creator are you an inventor maybe you can take something out there and improve it make it better hang out with people or coming up with ideas hang out with people or creating a business and taking it further, don't go and hang out with super wealthy millionaires. Hang out with people who are in the same place as you and are always thinking, what could I create? Who could fund this? What could I make? What could I invent? What does the world need? I tell this story a lot that when my brother went to private school, his math was you have 10 companies, you sell for him and you got left with well, seven, but I've also got all the money because I sold my assets. My math said you have 10 bananas, you eat two. How many have you got left? Eight, but I've given away, I've got lost my equity. Well, eight and they're going to rot. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't, I had bananas, apples and pears. You have three apples, you give two away, you got one left. But when you have three companies and you sell two, even the way we teach children math is interesting. And another thing that happens is it is parents who say you want money. Well, take out the trash, wash, you got to earn the money. And that's a good thing, except... You're learning something. I get money by doing menial jobs that no one wants to do, washing dishes, taking out the trash, mowing the lawn. And you have to try, although it's not easy, to go, okay, what is my kid good at? What could I pay them for? They can make greeting cards. They can help me do some accounting. They can help me sort something out in the house. They can help me with my diary. And even though they may not be helping you at all, it makes them think, oh, I can use my skill. So I'd with my daughter, I'd always say, make greeting cards, do something, make make some pictures of my put on the wall, make some stuff I can give away. Hmm. And now she's an artist. Yeah, yeah now she's yeah. an artist. So I'm also hearing you say, definitely the I'm worth it. Definitely find out what your gifts were mm. between those set ages. Yeah and then see what those underlying skills yeah. are, the things that really yeah. like light your soul on fire, yeah. right? And then it's about earning more and yeah. saving more yeah. because you're worth both. Yeah, and, and get used to asking for money and talk about that, you know, practice asking for a pay rise, practice asking for promotion. If you do it enough, it feels familiar. I believe a very controversial topic I wanna touch on here before I ask mm -hmm. you the final question, and I, I'm gonna be really careful <laughs> defining this very controversial thing. Going back to the very beginning of the conversation when we were talking about uh, children in particular, mm. right? And if you just like give them things, mm. like the fanciest dishwasher, they may not appreciate it. Oh, not they didn't appreciate right? it at all. Because they don't have that investment. Mm. The people that got mm. the free smoking sessions had a, a much, yeah. much lower success yeah. rate. And then when they invested, yeah. they had a much higher success mm. rate. And that's just true across the board. That yeah. is a human reality. So when people achieve extreme wealth and they decide to rewild a mm -hmm. part of a country yes. is very different than if they were to just go out and hand out 
thousands of dollars yeah. to random people all the time, which actually does happen on like TikTok. Yeah. And there's lots of influencers that do that. Sure, but look at Eric amounts. Clapton. Eric Clapton mm -hmm. made all his money in music. And so the thing that's given me the most joy across the board is creating crossroads. I was an alcoholic and now he has a rehab facility and he gives a lot of free places away. But the wealth he made as a musician paid for crossroads. And Cross is giving him more joy than any music award he ever got than standing on stage at the Albert Hall. Crossroads is the thing. So he wasn't necessarily spiritual. In fact, he was a drug user and a terrible alcoholic because of that, I'm not worth it. Get rid of it all. The self-destruction for that tremendous talent. But now look what he's done. He's become spiritual by having this place that he loves and he does so much good through it. So that's a great story there that you're doing one thing, but if you have that good heart and that real keen interest in how you could help people, then something will come up. You know, Wycliffe Jean often tells the story. His father was a preacher and wanted him to preach, and you've got to be a preacher, and, you, and he didn't want to be a preacher. And the father, and he really locked heads because he did not want to be a preacher, but later... He became a singer, wrote beautiful songs. And of course, Wycliffe has used a lot of his wealth to help Haiti. So he's done great things. He has become the preacher his father wanted him to be. He's done good things. He's helped people through his music, through his wealth. And he's a big ambassador for Haiti. So again, you think you're going there, but you're really going over there and around there. But in the end, he is a preacher. But he monetized preaching because he saw his father giving a message from the pulpit, and he understood about messaging, but he messaged through money. J.K. Rowling made so much money because there's no money in children. I've, I share her, her agent. I remember him telling me at the time, there's no money in this book. He gave me a first edition. I gave it to my daughter, and she got a 2000 pound advance. I got a 30,000 pound advance, but of course she's leaps and bounds way ahead of me because you have to, where did that believe? There's no money in children's books. You write for the love of teaching children to read. You can't make money from being a children's writer, but she's become a billionaire just from writing those books. Never mind the movie rights and the merchandising. See if you can find someone who's made that belief not true. If there was one penultimate belief as like the finale mm -hmm. for this, if there was one belief that was like the ultimate beyond all others, for money is beautiful, for mm. uh, abundance, for energy, mm. right? For the future of everyone that's watching, money, life. What would that one belief be? I think I would say the universe that put you on the planet gave you a talent. And the universe that gave it to you will support you totally as you monetize it. Think about who gave you your talent and then think about well, why did they give it to you? Of course, that you could use it. Otherwise, why have it? You know, when you have a talent, you're supposed to share it to help people. So you were given it for a reason. And the very person that gave you that is going to support you a million percent in monetizing it, developing it, and realizing you're here to find out what your gift is, to share it with the world, and to monetize it. That's why you're here. Check out my next video here.